Hello, thank you so much for joining me for today's Give Him 15. The title of our post today is Life, Liberty, and Penumbra. My good friend, fellow patriot, attorney, and retired U.S. Army Major William Osten agreed to share some important insights with us regarding the Dobbs abortion case. His insights are important. He says, as the Dobbs case brought the macabre issue of abortion back to the forefront of the nation's consciousness, I re-remembered my time as a student at Pepperdine Law Law School. I began my studies with the premise that all life is sacred and therefore knew that abortion was a grievous wrong. What I shockingly learned at law school was that the Supreme Court justice who authored the Roe v. Wade case knew that his reasoning was also wrong, according to the U.S. Constitution, but he wrote the fatal majority opinion anyway. When I read Roe, In the cases that came before and after it, I always experienced righteous anger and cognitive dissonance. This is because the justices were very smart lawyers at the pinnacle of their profession, but they were making very stupid abortion-related rulings based on nothing that resembled constitutional law. In fact, Justice Blackman admitted this in his Roe opinion when he stated, The Constitution does not explicitly mention any right of privacy. However, the court has recognized that a right of personal privacy does exist under the Constitution in the penumbras of the Bill of Rights. I didn't know what a penumbra was, Williams says, but thought it must be something unbelievably profound and clearly convincing since it was being used to create a right of privacy, the faulty foundation on which abortion was built. I found out that penumbra began as an astronomy term and was borrowed by the legal profession. It means a partial shade or obscurity on the margin of the perfect shade uh, in an eclipse, or between the perfect shade where the light is entirely intercepted and the full light. So basically, Justice Blackman discovered the right to privacy, which has enabled a mother to murder her child in the darkness of a shadow emanating from the Bill of Rights. His ridiculous jurisprudence would be laughable if the consequences weren't so tragic. If law school taught me anything, it's that intelligence does not automatically guarantee wisdom. They are different. In other words, even if someone is very smart, it doesn't mean they possess moral clarity on the sacred issues of life and liberty. And that's exactly what we need to pray for the justices to possess in this case, namely the moral clarity and personal courage to overrule one of the most heinous and evil decisions in our country's history. Below are a couple of insights that will encourage you to pray with endurance until the Dobbs case is formally decided. First, the first week in December truly was an important, extremely important time for Dobbs as oral arguments were presented and the nine justices met by themselves that Friday for a prim- preliminary vote on their decision. However, this is not necessarily a final vote, as some believe. If the decision is close, then the justices will lobby each other right up until this summer when the final written opinion is released 
with the force of law. There is a precedent for this happening before with landmark cases. For example, the Obamacare ruling seemed strange when it was released as Chief Justice Roberts' legal reasoning was incoherent. Also, the minority opinion written by the four conservative justices read like a majority opinion. Supreme Court experts were initially confused. What came to light later is that John Roberts switched sides in May, mere weeks before the final written decision was released. Despite a one-month campaign from Anthony Kennedy to, to stay with the conservatives on the right side of a 5-4 vote. Jan Crawford of CBS News reported, quote, I am told by two sources with specific knowledge of the court's deliberations that Roberts initially sided with the conservatives in this case and was prepared to strike down the individual mandate. But Roberts changed his views, deciding instead to join with the liberals. There was a one-month campaign, she says, to bring Roberts back into the conservative fold, led, ironically, by Anthony Kennedy. William continues, the Dobbs case, like Obamacare, may go down to the wire. We must pray without ceasing until the final written opinion is released in June or July 2022. Anything can happen in the next several months. Number two, he says, second, and in my opinion, most importantly, we must pray for who is assigned to write the opinion. If Chief, Chief Justice Roberts is in the majority, then he will decide who writes it. His previous written opinions have shown him to be highly concerned with the legal doctrine of stare decisis et non whatever, which is Latin for to stand by things decided and not to disturb settled points. Because of stare decisis, Roberts may be unwilling to completely overturn Roe and his opinion could take an incre incrementalistic middle ground approach. Therefore, while this may seem counterintuitive, it could be better to have a 5-4 win without Roberts than a 6-3 win with him. If a 5-4 win happens, then Justice Clarence Thomas will decide who writes the opinion. He may write it himself, which would be great, as he possesses moral clarity, or assign it to another justice in the conservative majority. Wouldn't it be amazing if he selected Justice Amy Coney Barrett, a mother with adopted children, to write the opinion that finally overturns almost 50 years of abortion? The late Justice Antonin Scalia, who was a stalwart conservative and constitutional originalist, would write scathing minority opinions in any abortion-related cases that came to the Supreme Court after Roe. In 1992's Planned Parenthood of Southeastern Pennsylvania versus Casey, he wrote, The court merely prolongs and intensifies the anguish. We should get out of this area where we have no right to be and where we do neither ourselves nor the country any good by remaining. Amen. William finishes by saying the entire dissenting opinion by Justice Scalia in Casey displayed his brilliance and prescience 30 years ago. Let's pray together that he is finally proven right and a favorable ruling in Dobbs is the beginning of the end to our national anguish over abortion. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. 
the Supreme Court has granted a hearing for the Dobbs case, we appeal to you, the Supreme Judge of all the earth, to safeguard life in America. Please completely overturn Roe v. Wade. We pray by name for Justices John Roberts, Clarence Thomas, Stephen Breyer, Samuel Alito, Sonia Sotomayor, Elena Kagan, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett. May the Holy Spirit move in their hearts and minds so that they would rule on the side of life. Break through any seared consciences and give them renewed moral clarity so that they can see right from wrong. We ask that the justices would not be influenced by political pressure or perceived public opinion, but that they would be impartial in their judgment. And Father, we pray that the fear of you would be present as the justices deliberate the case and negotiate with one another. Please grant strength to the five conservatives to hold the line on life, regardless of Robert's influence. Give the entire nine divine wisdom, the true wisdom from heaven, and empower them to be free from any confusion the enemy may cause. Let them be clear-minded and free from distraction. Lord, we implore you to frustrate the pro-abortion activists and the media's attempts to deceive the American public by labeling pro-life policy as extreme. We also ask that you inspire pro-life advocates to continue in their efforts to discover creative ways to tell the beautiful stories of choosing life. We pray that accurate information will be distributed to the public about how policies like Mississippi's Gestational Age Act protects mothers and babies. Let the Dobbs case mark the beginning of the end to our national anguish over abortion. Jesus, I plead your blood over my sins and the sins of my nation. God, end abortion and send revival to America. Our decree. We decree that Dobbs will completely overturn Roe v. Wade and be the first step in totally eradicating the scourge of abortion from America so that our land will be healed. Amen. Thanks, William, for helping us. William J. Oston is a retired United States Army major and the recipient of two bronze stars, founder and CEO of Arc of Justice, a nonprofit organization that advocates for wounded warriors. Will is the co-author of the Wounded Warrior Bill of Rights and is a Blackstone Fellow. You can find out more about him and the Ark of Justice by using the links we've given you. And Will has quite a few footnotes where he makes some additional comments and gives information for any of you scholars that like the details. Thank you for joining me, and thanks again, Will, for this wonderful uh, update and the information, and I'll see all of you tomorrow. Thank you.